What are you doing? We're just coming back from uh, the restaurant. Mona Lisa had a did, very nice lunch. What did you have? Um, eggplant parmesan. <laughs> Did you like it? I loved you it. You didn't have none. I think you had eggplant Real rollatini, teeny. didn't you? Oh, I had, uh, that's right. I had eggplant rollatini. Oh, Anything you want to say to your happen. fans, Lorraine? Um, I love them. You love your fans? I love my fans. Are all fans on Facebook, right? Yes, <laughs> I love them all. Okay, we'll say hi to them again. Hi. Merry Christmas. Angels, it's Haley Reese and I'm sure that you guys were not expecting one last video in this series but I really felt compelled to share today's video with you guys as I'm sure you guys know by now Warner Brothers flew me out to Connecticut to watch the first exclusive screening of Annabelle comes home and to have a full day packed with all that was to do with Ed and Lorraine Warren and the whole entire Annabelle experience. Annabelle Comes Home is now in theaters, so make sure that you guys either get your tickets down in the description or go and see Annabelle Comes Home because trust me, you guys will absolutely not regret it. I have absolutely loved bringing you guys all of these videos from Connecticut. This is perhaps one of my favorite series I've ever had on my channel and I'm so appreciative to Warner Brothers for the opportunity but today's video is lighter and very special to me personally, and that is because as part of our Annabelle Comes Home Day of Adventures, we had the humbling and privilege and such an incredible opportunity to go to the final resting place of Ed and Lorraine Warren and pay our respects. As you guys know, Lorraine Warren recently passed away, so her and Ed are now in paradise together, and we got to go and visit their grave site alongside their daughter, Judy Warren, and their son-in-law, Tony Sparrow. Now, Tony so kindly shared really nice stories of Ed and Lorraine Warren's lives while we were there paying our respects, and I wanted to share that with you guys because Ed and Lorraine Warren should be remembered for the incredible people that they were. I truly adored getting to know them further during this whole experience, and I wanted to end this series with a video dedicated to them. So I'm going to share with you guys the footage that I obtained when I was there at the gravesite of Ed and Lorraine Warren. One of my biggest dreams was to get to meet Lorraine Warren before her passing, but getting to go there and pay my respects was just so humbling and incredible. I actually got to tell Judy right to her face how much her parents have impacted me, how much we've enjoyed being here on my channel and going through all of the different cases that they've explored, and just how much of a mark they've left on the paranormal community. So without further ado, I'm going to roll the clips. When he died, she had this made up. That's her maiden name, Lorraine Rita Moran. Born January 31st, 27. Of course, she uh, passed on the 18th of April. This is the Virgin Mary here that she had carved in. Of course, she's got Warren here because that was a really the, the name that they always went by. Over here, it says Sunday, Monday, always. Some people your age would never know what that is. But I'm going to tell you, and you can look it up. The song made famous by Bing Crosby back in the war days was Sunday, Monday, and Always. That was their song, Sunday, Monday, and Always. And on their 50th wedding anniversary, I remember the DJ. I said, Ed, what song do you want to play for your dance with Lorraine? He said, oh, do they have Sunday, Monday, Always by Bing Crosby? And the guy had it, so he played it. And underneath there it says, their hearts were full of spring. And there's a song called, their hearts were full of spring. You can look that up too. Um, there was two versions, one by uh, Jimmy Rogers, who sang it back in 1958 or so. And actually there's an a cappella version by the Beach Boys, which is very good. And uh, it tells about a young couple, a young girl and a boy, a gentle boy, and uh, how they lived from day to day and week to week and then they grew all together and then one day they died uh, on a gra in a grave side by side on a hill where robins sing and it said violets grow there the whole year round for their hearts were full of spring that was Ed and Lorraine to a T they were always youthful always talking to younger people. They never considered themselves old. Never. Yeah. Never. I had young parents. I used to go over their house when I was in my 40s. Well, a couple years ago. <laughs> <laughs> when I was in my 40s, I'd go over the house 
could have 21 year old guests have for dinner in their house, 25 year old people that they hung out with, and they were in their <laughs> 60s, we're saying. And in their 70s, when Lorraine was in her 70s, she'd hang out with young people, she had young friends in her 20s and 30s. Their hearts were always full of spring, and they always stayed together no matter what they did. They never worked separately, they worked together. And here are carved daisies. My favorite flower. Her favorite flower were daisies. And the only reason they were her favorite flower because Ed used to take walks in the morning and he'd pick wild daisies. And he'd bring them back like a little boy every day. He'd come back and he'd go, Lorena, I got you some flowers, like a little baby. And he would do it like as many times as the daisies would bloom. He'd have them in his hand. Or he'd buy them in a store and bring them to her almost daily. Um, wild daisies. Over here, it says NESPR founded 1952. Nobody here is even that age, except me. <laughs> no. NESPR, found New England Society for Psychic Research, that he founded in 52 with Lorraine. Here, and you guys can look at it later, engraved a beautiful image of St. Michael, the archangel, with his head on the devil. No, I'm sorry, his foot on the devil's head. It says St. Michael, the archangel, and then there's a prayer here. St. Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the divine power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who roam throughout the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. On the hidden leaf here, the New England Society for Psychic Research, founded in 1952 by Ed Lorraine Warren. Excuse me, Ed. This side here is an Ed and Lorraine's grandson, Corey uh, Michael great, Denley. Great, great grandson who uh, was born in April 26, 1989, and tragically he was killed in a car collision in 2009. He was just shy of his, uh, just, just made his 20th mm. birthday. So he's buried here too. And he wanted to be in the movie industry, and there was a he place we went to, by the uh, when they had the first uh, premiere. Heather yeah. was with my mother, and she said that's the school he was going to go to, so maybe like now he the curious people. And now he's you know, he's full circle. Yeah. Yeah, full circle. Yeah. Uh, here is Ed's uh, World War II uh, marker that the Navy put down for him when he passed. Edward Warren Miney, U.S. Navy, World War II, September 7th, 26 to August 23rd, 06. And like I told some of the group about, I told you about the moon and things, but Ed. But I didn't tell you how Ed almost didn't make it out of uh, the North Atlantic. On February 5th, 1945, the ship went down after it collided with a tanker, an oil tanker, thanks, thank you. With an oil tanker in the North Pacific, in the North Atlantic. I remember, 1945, when was, uh, uh, she 19. 19 years old. It was 19 years old. The ship blows up. There's fire all over the place. It has to jump overboard with every member of the, of the sailors. All the sailors oil, had to Oil in the water. Pardon me? Oil in the water. An oil tanker. Yeah. All oil on fire. The whole sea was on fire. Ed lands into the water, but Ed in life, in his civilian life, was a lifeguard. When he was like 15, 16, he could swim really good. But a guy, a buddy of his named Salazar, went overboard with him. He saw Salazar struggling in the water. Now remember, it's February in the North Atlantic. It's freezing cold, shark infested waters. And back in World War II, you know, the Navy used to tell him, if you ever get uh, stranded in the water with sharks, Make a lot of splashing noises. Make a lot of splashing. So Ed was doing it. That's the worst thing you could do, they learned later. That's attracting the sharks. <laughs> he didn't know it. He said he sees guys getting eaten by sharks. Guys going under for the last time. Salazar's going down for the third time. It's his buddy. He swims over to him, puts his arm around Salazar, and swims. He's saying to me later, he goes, I'm swimming, Tom, but I don't know where I'm going because there's nowhere to go. So I'm, I'm like treading water, and I'm looking. I see this wall of flame, and I'm saying to myself, I'm going to die right here at 19 years old. I'm never going to make it out of here. As he said, and he's praying to God. As he's doing that, the waters part. Flames. And the waters go like the, the, the uh, flames part like this. He sees a rescue raft coming through, chugging through with two sailors on it. They get up within about five feet of Ed and, and Salazar, and he hands off Salazar. Here, take him, take him. He grabs Salazar, Salazar's arm and take him, right? They put him on board. The other sailor goes like this, leave him, 
leave them in the water. We got to go. It's going to blow again. It's going to blow. Now Ed's saying, I'm dead. You're going to leave me in the in water here to die. The other sailor goes, I don't leave any man in the water. He grabs Ed's arm the last minute, pulls him on board. Ed was that close to, to being history back in 1945. But that's how life is, you know. He was destined to live for some reason. When he was a kid, he was uh, he went to a Catholic school, and they wanted to give the priest a present on his birthday. So they all chipped in and gave him a smoking jacket, a nice red smoking jacket. And Ed says to the kids, "Boy, I want to be a priest someday so I can get a smoking jacket." Red. <laughs> 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 so he's walking home, and he's. he's uh, rubbing his fingers against the stone wall he's whistling going down the street walking home from school and all of a sudden he hears a female voice say to him Ed, you'll do more than a hundred priests and he goes, he heard a female he thought it might be his aunt or somebody who was a nun and he said later, he goes, that was true I did more than a hundred priests and the things I did in my life to save people and to save people from torment so that's the story of Ed and Lorraine. Now Lorraine was a psychic when she grew up. She didn't know it. When she was nine years old, she went to a Catholic girls' school called Laurelton Hall, like a little prestigious place. And as she's standing in line to go to French class with her classmates at nine years old, she looks at one of the students, and she looks at Mother Superior and Sister Joseph, and she goes, look at, look at Sister Joseph's lights. Her lights are brighter than Mother Superior's lights. <laughs> Talking about the aura that she saw around these people. And the Mother Superior overheard her talking like that. And she said, Lorraine, come here. Come here, Lorraine. Stand right here. You're staying after school and praying. We don't talk about those things here. So even back then, people were no-no about the supernatural. And so she was frightened. She didn't even tell her folks that she had that ability. The only reason she told anybody when she got older and met Ed, they went into a haunted house together, and Ed brought in a psychic, an outsider. He brought in a, a known psychic to investigate this haunted house. And he's walking around with Lorraine, who wasn't doing much at the time. Remember, she's in her 20s now. And she tells the homeowner, the psychic, tells this homeowner what's going on in the house. I picture this. I picture a lady dressed in... She pulls that aside, Lorraine. She says, Ed, I don't want to say anything, but that psychic is dead wrong. Doesn't know what she's talking about. Ed goes, lady, what are you talking about? You don't know anything about psychic, psychic ability and clairvoyance. He said, oh, I'm telling you. She's wrong. This is what really happened. But back then, Ed didn't even know he she was psychic. Anything, and he didn't even know what clairvoyance meant back then. So he looks at Lorraine, he looks at the homeowner, and the homeowner goes, your wife is right. Your wife is right. The psychic's not, not with it at all. Ed started to believe. Now the rain had psych she did have the psychic ability she did have. And as she went into more and more houses, she developed it even more. Because everybody has a little bit of psychic awareness. You may not even think about it, but you know, there's been times when the phone rang and you're thinking about your, your brother or your friend Joe, and all of a sudden the phone rings and it's Joe. Or you, you're rounding a turn or something. And you say, I better slow down, I might be a truck on the road or something, and boom, there's an obstacle in the road. Something told you that, but you, you dismiss it as coincidence. That's actually psychic awareness festering up in you, but you're like suppressing it down. Suppressing it. But naturally, some people have more psychic ability than others. Like women, for instance, have a lot more sensitivity. It's just the nature of the person, more sensitivity than men. Because men like to suppress, I don't cry. I don't feel nothing. I'm strong. You push everything down. When a woman lets the emotions bubble to the top, it helps. So that's why a lot of times there's a lot of women wrong, psychics. Believe it, woman. What? If you think something's wrong, yeah, believe, believe it. it. Go with yeah. your first gut feeling. Go with it. When you go with that Trust first gut that. feeling, it works. That. Yeah. She's been spot on yeah. about things. She hates to do it because she doesn't. Uh, she's not comfortable with no. hauntings and with ghosts. She's afraid yeah, because of her parents. Like because her father used to tell her stories all the time about ghosts. I'm not in a good place here. I shouldn't yeah. be here. If you feel that way, you're right. That ability. That, and also about your spirit guides and your, your guardian angels. Everybody has one, you know. Everybody has a guardian angel. Everybody has a spirit guide. But you have to call on them to help you. 
And like I said to them before, you got to be aware of your surroundings because we had a case, and I'll tell you the case, and then I'll show you quick about EVPs and psychic photos. We had a case one time where uh, a woman was molested and beaten and her purse stolen as she walked across the street in a busy city late at night. She was getting out of a bar. She's walking across the street near an alleyway. She walks around the corner, these two guys are there. They grab her and they beat her up. A woman who, a woman who was passing by that same street Oh, about 30 minutes before, she reads about it in the paper. She was, I was at that same exact location, and I saw those two guys. So she calls the cops. Well, they do an investigation, leads them to more leads on the, on the description of the guys. They capture these two guys and bring them in for questioning. And they, these guys admit that they molested, well, I say molested, attacked, beat her up, took her purse. They left her for dead, this woman. So they questioned the guys, and they said, look, we got a question for you. There was a woman that about 30 minutes before that walked through. And she was pretty vulnerable, and you let her walk through. And guys asked her, how come? Because they knew the witness. The witness had called. How come you didn't grab her and do anything with her? What was the problem with her? And they looked, the detectives looked at the guy, and the guy answered, one guy answered back. He says, Why would we do that? Why would we grab her? She was walking with two guys. She wasn't walking with two guys, she was alone. But her spirit guides or her guardian angels were right with her. She must have prayed to God for help. She must have said, God, get me through this. So one made it through and one didn't. Now, why am I saying that to you? Because if you're ever in a bad situation, you pray to God. And you envision yourself in a glowing white light around your body and ask God to protect you. Call on your guardian angels for protection. So there you guys have it. That's a little sneak peek into Ed and Lorraine Warren. I hope that you guys enjoyed today's video. I really wanted to share this with you guys nonetheless. And I am just so thankful for this whole entire experience. In light of that, please, please, please go and see Annabelle Comes Home. It is so good, you guys. And I just really think that you guys are going to absolutely love it and enjoy it. I hope that you guys have enjoyed this whole entire series. This was one of the coolest experiences I've ever had in my whole entire life. Warner Brothers has not had to ask me to say anything. I have just been so excited to share this with you guys. So I hope that you guys enjoyed today's video. And that is it for today's video. If you guys are new to my channel or you are just not yet subscribed but you do enjoy my videos, make sure you go ahead and click that subscribe button. And please give this video a big thumbs up if you did enjoy it. Remember my loves, do all things with kindness. And until next time. I love you guys.